Hello viewers, Super GT here on Gran Turismo. Now, this race here, just, just look at that car. It is the Fiat 500. Oh yes, it's going to make for an amazing race, no doubt. There it is. An absolute beauty. Now, this is uh, daily race A, typically done in a road car. A shorter race, so six laps, although this car can barely reach 70 miles an hour, so it might take a while. Toast roast there on our outside as we uh, head towards turn one at a fairly conservative 50 miles an hour, or just breaking towards 60. There we go into turn one, and I think there's someone on me. So, yes, there he is, Mr. Toast. He's done it. I'm going to go for a little cutback on him though. He goes a little too hot. Now, these cars, any slow car, it's all about keeping the momentum through the corners. It's absolutely crucial. If you don't manage that, then you basically die. Now, these cars, as you can imagine, don't have very powerful engines. In fact, my Nan has more horsepower than, than a Fiat 500. So holding your speed through the corners is, is crucial. And if you don't manage it, well, game over for you. So then the Dutchman in the lead goes fairly defensive. The, the Finn there doesn't quite know where to go. So I'm going to nip up the inside to try and tuck into that slipstream uh, minimize our drag as much as possible not that we're reaching really that high speed so it's not really going to make too much of a difference although I think you do need every little tenth that you can get so it looks, looks fairly close behind looking for that 50 board just up ahead there it is on the brakes I think I may have been a little bit um, better on the brakes there than the, than the Dutch guy as we almost go to the back of him you can see there the car sliding across as we try to get on the power a little bit twitchy though so we've got the Frenchman Mr Toast on our outside just got to leave him our car width on the left there he is just poking his nose into the screen so now actually I've had a really poor exit there you can see that bad bad exit and I'm going to lose momentum all the way down the next straight and now the fin is going to come back for a move on the outside. So we're going to hold station here on the inside line as we go into the hairpin at the end of the lap. Looking up the inside, is he going to leave the space? Yes, he is. We uh, get very close, very cosy on the exit. So I think all this is doing is helping the leader, the Dutchman, to pull away. And taking that narrow line through the final turn hasn't really helped our momentum once again onto the main straight. So it looks like the Finn is, yes yeah, so there he is on that left hand side. The drivers look really funny in these cars. As we go into turn one, on the, late, on the brakes fairly late, and uh, we can keep our position, the Frenchman goes for a move, thinks about it at least. So he's caught up. We'll just focus on getting that good exit, and I think we've done it this time around. So the race looked like it was going away there, as the Dutchman did have a gap. It's going to come back down, we're going to cycle through the different viewpoints here. Okay, this view fairly good and then you've got the roof cam kind of thing here fairly commanding lofty views as we go through the chicane in a group three car that's quite a, it's a fast sweeping chicane but in this car it's, it's just nothing and you see the chase cam there you can't see anything basically so that's why I'm not choosing it you basically can't see ahead of you which obviously isn't very useful for the final turn and it's status quo as it, as it was um, not really much in the way of change. It actually looks strangely large from that from that viewpoint there. And I'm, I'm not sure why you can't quite see over it. Uh, well, I, can't, I'm, I am sure it's because the camera's too low. Right then, into turn one. That's half the race done. It's about time something good happened. Go on, Frenchman. Go for that lunge. There he is. He's, he tried that on the previous lap. He's just nudged the Dutchman wide. And I'm going to make the most of this situation. Go past the Frenchie up the inside so he had a poor run as a result of the contact I'm into the lead how can we go about keeping this one now it's gonna be fairly tricky they are battling behind I need that I need that and the more they fight the better if they can just smash each other off in the next turn that would be very very useful indeed uh, it looks like the Frenchman though has got through just monitoring the situation in my mirror so looking for the 50 board we're gonna break just after that we're flying in and uh, the Frenchman just have a, did have a nibble there on the apex, didn't quite manage it 
Uh, so the same positions as we come down the straight. So Britt now up into third place. The, the Dutchman down to fourth. That's not a good lap for him. And the Finn down to fifth. That's now the Frenchman. He's going to look for the move. So it's a decision, do I go defensive or do I keep this outside line, break late and then try to have the inside line for the next corner. I'm going to try and keep the the inside line. I pressed a little bit too late. I still kind of had the inside line but he's uh, going to keep the momentum around the outside and that's going to be a penalty. So that has really ruined our, ruined our race. Uh, trying to get rid of 1.3 seconds worth of penalty and trying to win, Ooh, that's going to be really tricky. I think keeping second will be a good good shout if I could do that so then coming up towards the final corner once again the action is slow but it's you know it's close and you do have to be really consistent you do have to know your corners it does teach you to be very smooth indeed so the Brit now coming up for an attack from behind so that's the good thing about this view you don't really have to look behind you just have the mirror so that you know it helps a little bit so then, one lap remaining. I, I suppose all I can do here really is... I mean, if I go for the lead, I could overtake him, but then will I be able to get 1.2 seconds ahead or 1.3? Probably not, unless they really do make a big mistake. Um, all I can do is really just try to nail a good lap, get that gap over the big group behind. Third, fourth and fifth are very close, so trying to keep second with that penalty is going to be really difficult. I suppose... I mean, the penalties work in quite a simple way I mean if I get that to let's say 0 0.9 then it will round it up to one second so I could just go over the line with 0 0.9 and take the one second penalty added to my race time but I didn't get the best of exits through that first corner it's basically a, um, a sequence of two corners here so you've got this final hairpin and then you've got the first kind of hairpin and getting a good run through either of them or through both of them is crucial so getting a lot closer and through the apex, definitely going to reel him right in. It's not going to be enough to win though. So Toast, Mr. Toast Woast, funny name, but he's going to win. And will I be able to keep second? We're going to see how I can uh, kind of navigate this situation here. I'm coming up to the line, I'm going to break, and <laughs> the Dutchman smashing me in the rear end. I mean, to be fair, I couldn't really go anywhere else. So I kind of had to go to the far left, which is off the racing line. And he's kind of smashed me into third place. He probably could have overtaken me there and got third, but I'm going to keep a podium. So not a bad little result. And actually, I think I need to do that uh, daily race A a bit more often. It's actually good fun. So there we go, third place. And I suppose we started in about the same place. So not too bad. Could be worse. Or it could have been better. So nothing, nothing worse I could do, though, to ruin my sportsmanship rating than to attempt to drive Le Mans. Now, I've done 100 laps around here in Group 1, but we're going to do it in Group 3 this time. I'm going for the Aston Martin, representing Britain, of course. So here it is. The, the Ford Mustang, there you can see it. Um, always a good car in terms of straight line speed. I'm starting 8th. Um, so, lots of overtaking to be done from there, basically. And as I say, or as we all know, we all know, Le Mans, Penalty City... Um, it doesn't go well around here so sportsmanship rating is um, I'm putting it up on the line basically there's a very good chance that I could come away here with an E sportsmanship rating for getting about 10 years worth of penalties now check the guy out ahead Canyon Drifter um, through the first chicane boom penalty <laughs> um, I think that's got to be the quickest penalty I've ever seen in this game uh, about, about two seconds and he's already He's run over the red curb of death. You know, you touch that little red curb on the apex of the final chicane and it gives you a penalty. So, I mean, I suppose it is consistent around here. It's quite simple. You cut. Oh, well, that's consistent at least. You get smashed off at turn one by a feisty Italian. Good stuff. But as I was going to say, it's fairly consistent. I mean, it's quite clear if you go up, if you go beyond the lines you get a penalty it is a little bit strong it is strong it's very strong but that's you know the way it is and I suppose you do have to kind of hold off a little bit through Turk Rouge now I've kind of misjudged that driving all four wheels beyond the curb there's almost certainly going to be a penalty we'll find out in just a moment there it is 2.6 seconds worth of penalty 
So this may be one of those races as we fast forward, this may be one of those races where everyone gets a penalty. I mean, I'd, I'd be surprised if someone gets away with that one. Where everyone's going to get a penalty and it'll just be a, an adding up job at the end. Where who, who's got the least penalty, basically. So through the second chicane in the Aston Martin. Now I can go back into the slipstream of the feisty Italian. Came in for a nice move at turn one. So he's driving the Corvette, going to pull out and get past him quite easily. So of course slipstream is always going to feature here at Le Mans with the notoriously long straights into the next corner. And on the brakes, pretty much just in time, I was waiting the punt and it didn't arrive from the Italian. So maybe he's learnt the error of his ways. So still 2.6 pe uh, second penalty. We can fast forward many of these straights. You may see this quite a lot. He did get a lot closer as we approach the next turn. That's an easy place to get another penalty. And yellow flag up ahead. Ferrari, the Frenchman in the Ferrari. Slow. He's obviously made some sort of mistake or got punted. One of the two. And we are through. Yep, up into sixth place. So steady progress on this first lap. The gaps can get rather large and it can be quite tricky to kind of catch up. I mean, there's not much you can do on a straight line. I suppose you can get in the slipstream, but if you're not in the slipstream range, then you're basically screwed. There's not much you can do. So Porsche Curves for the first time in the Aston Martin Group 3 car. Group 1 cars absolutely fly through here. Not quite the same story in the Group 3 car. You do have to lift off a little, quite a little bit, but a little bit more. Uh, so we're through there okay. Gain slightly on this battle for fourth place with a Frenchman and a Portuguese guy up ahead. Uh, so third place onwards have kind of have gapped us already. So of course Group C, or oh sorry, Daily Race C as we oh, get another penalty. Way too much of a cut, up to eight seconds. Unfortunately the two guys ahead don't have a penalty so, you know, I'm up against it here once again. I just, I just can't help myself. I just love a penalty. I think I, I think I just love attacking and pushing too much. And then, well, I mean, many people sound cautious, but I do like to attack. And there we go, another penalty. So this really isn't going well. Although the Portuguese guy now has a penalty. Hopefully, that's more than 10.8 seconds. Then he can uh, compete with me for the highest penalty in this race. So. Um, I suppose I might as well just leave it there. I'm just going to try and race and see what I can do. Obviously, not, not going to be good for my sportsmanship, uh, sportsmanship rating. As we, I might have just kept two wheels on that curb. I'm not sure. We will find out. He just no, we didn't. 13 seconds now to deal with. Although now both these guys ahead have a penalty. So this is where the slipstream battle. Look at the battle of the wings. Those wings are absolutely monstrous, holding us back though on the straights, of course. Uh, you don't want downforce on the straights. Getting through the corners. So the Nismo in the slipstream of the guy ahead, and I've just punted him into the first chicane. I kind of I met my braking zone, I think, but didn't really account for his one. And go past a an Italian who's made a mistake. Fast forward here, nice little drag race between the two of us, and he was he was getting ahead, but then he just backed off for some reason. I don't know why. He was getting ahead of me. So I was kind of happy to let him go because I did barge him off. But then he kind of backed off, so I'm not kind of sure what was going on. So we pulled away from him. Now, this is the end of lap number two. Now, as I was saying, kind of, well, briefly kind of saying, uh, daily race C, normally around about 20 minutes in uh, total length. And you normally do always need to do a pit stop. So fuel strategy is going to take its uh, toll here. We're down to about 25% worth of fuel. So you can't do a no stopper unless you do, you know, lean setting the entire race. Oh, sorry, yeah, lean setting the entire race. So we're gonna have to go in here, compare our fuel percentages as we go in, and I'm a little bit uh, late on the brakes. And well, that's gonna be another penalty, presumably. So we're gonna put the hard tires on. And just look at the amounts here. I'm on 21%, a couple of other guys here on 12, another guy on 26, 16, 14. So I've done a little bit better than a couple of the guys there. Um, Canyon Drifter with 31%. So obviously the, the higher the number the better. Meaning you save more fuel and you'll have to put less fuel in for the second half of the race. So 21% remaining meaning we use 79%. We only need 79% then for the second half of the race. Uh, we're going to fill up to the diamond though which is well, just a little bit past the diamond. 85%. 
So I was fuel saving a tiny bit, so there's actually no need to do that now. Penalty up to 14 seconds. Yeah, don't break too late in the pit lane, guys, otherwise you will get another penalty for that. So coming out in a comfortable fourth, so maybe that 21% there kind of helped us over the couple of guys there who had like 12, 14%. So that has helped, although the gap to third place has kind of increased. So it's going to be um, a weird one here because I'm in kind of no man's land. I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on my own and just basically got to try and increase this gap to the guys behind without getting any more penalties. That would help. So take it to a rouge a lot better that time. That's pretty much how you want to take it. So a bit more measured this time around. Now we're going to move towards the end of the race. It kind of, you know, nothing happened. No man's land, all that jazz. Now through this one, I kind of thought that was an okay line but clearly not. This is live footage of my life unravelling before my very eyes. Up to a 19 second penalty. Once it's above 15, it counts up at uh, seconds. So you pretty much have to, you have to get rid of it. And for some reason, I didn't get rid of all of it. Um, I kind of jumped the gun there and just went with seven seconds left. So I'm gonna have to stop again. I have settled now though into sixth place, my favorite position, uh, hunting down a Spaniard up ahead. So, quite how this one's going to go, I don't know. I'm still three seconds ahead of our turn turn one rammer, the Italian. And through there, we're going to add a casual 12 seconds on. Uh, yeah, up to 19 seconds. So, this is one of those races that just doesn't go well. Now, this is kind of a typical Gran Turismo experience, really. And we're going to fast forward this time because it just went on for so long. Uh, so, I mean, I could show all the races where I do win or you know do really well but I think sometimes I like to show the ones where you know it doesn't go so well it's a lesson basically it's a lesson to myself not to be so stupid and get so many penalties but it's also a lesson to you you know don't push too much around here because penalties will murder you Charlie Whiting is watching and that the Brit <laughs> Canyon Drifter not having a good day today uh, he's just span off there now these two guys are ghosted but then all of a sudden they're not ghosted so there's contact which I, I don't understand. Sometimes you've got a penalty and you can ghost through cars and then all of a sudden you can't. So it's really hard to understand when you can and can't do that. So I've got rid of about eight years worth of penalties. My sentence is over. I've been released from jail and then I've got another two seconds to deal with into the last couple of chicanes. I'm in eighth. It's where I started. Can I keep it? We shall see. I think a couple of people are going to be slowing down before the line and I slowed down just a little bit too late as across the line down to ninth so we actually lost the position overall disappointing really disappointing but as I said that's the lesson that's this is a lesson to you um, don't abuse track limits around Le Mans because they will abuse you back with penalties but there we go guys I do hope you enjoyed it let me know your thoughts I shall see you in the next one sub for more like the video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Listen.